our missions partners and helping to let us know what's going on. That's good news. Excited next week that Matt and, Matt and Cheryl are going to be here. You guys, some of you went with us when we went to uh, Eldoret, Kenya, and we had a wonderful time there. But um, uh, they're not here this morning. Stacy Schofer is, and, and I want to invite her. Well, in a little bit, they have a video first. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get my act together. I'm usually preaching at this time, so give me a break, all right? Um, <laughs> so uh, after the video, I want you, when she comes up, to give her a big Abundant Life welcome. Don't forget to do that. So let's watch this together. In 1958, David Wilkerson traveled to New York City to preach the gospel to teenage gangs. He quickly recognized that drug and alcohol addiction was consuming the lives of the youth. Adult and Teen Challenge was founded to address the growing addiction epidemic. And today the need is greater than ever, and everything we do always comes back to our primary mission, to make disciples. We want to put hope within reach of every addict. In 1983, Mike Hodges opened the first campus in Oregon, and now the Adult and Teen Challenge Pacific Northwest Family of Ministries has expanded to five states throughout the region. For the last four decades, we have been growing and refining our approach to the discipleship process. We recognize that people need more than just sobriety. They need every area of their life to be transformed by the gospel. So we offer a comprehensive approach to recovery. At the core of our ministry is our residential recovery program. When students walk through our doors, they meet Jesus. And when they meet Jesus, the transformation process begins. Within the structure of a campus and in the community of peers and our staff, they develop spiritual disciplines. They learn how to pray, how to study scripture, how to worship, and how to be lifelong disciples of Christ. And as their faith grows, they find freedom. It's a sanctuary. It's a place to check out from this craziness of this world and not have all the pressures of responsibilities, but just one thing in mind establishing a relationship with the Lord. Addiction creates complex behavioral health challenges, so we have integrated Life Renewal to provide state-approved counseling by our own professionally trained addiction counselors. Our students participate in individual and group therapy, and our counselors equip them with the tools they need to heal from their past and apply biblical principles to their lifelong recovery. We are offering students evidence-based treatment with a Christian worldview. This will allow them to live their lives um, in a more successful and positive way while also helping them to stand strong in their identity. We were designed to work, created to be productive. So our vocational training program helps our students establish the skills needed to be productive members of our society. Our thrift stores, work crews, and other vocational experiences teach important life skills, teamwork, leadership, stewardship, and integrity. We help students discover the joy of an honest day's work. And rather than sitting on the sidelines during their recovery, they build confidence as they put their new skills into practice. I see students really adapt very well in the stores. They're enjoying the environment they're in. They're, they're productive. They, you see a, there's a reward in work that you've never seen before with students. The works that our students do sets them up to thrive once they leave our program. Discipleship is not just about learning the gospel, but also living it out. David Wilkerson founded this ministry on outreach. So Hope Outreach gives our students the opportunity to discover the joy of serving, to give back to their community, and to deliver hope beyond our campus walls. We work with local partners to bring compassion to our communities. Our students share their stories to bring prevention and awareness to local schools. We establish community discipleship groups for those in recovery, and we share the hope we have found in Christ through evangelism. At Adult and Teen Challenge, our comprehensive approach to recovery is allowing us to broaden our reach and improve outcomes for our students. Our comprehensive approach helps us put hope within reach of every addict and make lifelong disciples. Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. But that's a really cool thing to see someone being um, given that opportunity to experience hope for the first time and everything about them begins to change. I just have an undeniable passion for God. I, he has brought me through so much and it honestly could only come from him. 
probably the best decision I've ever made coming to the program. The program really molded me into a man of God. Like when I came in the program, I was a kid. I was 18 years old. Um, and it was in the program that I learned how to become a man as a student. Teen Challenge has uh, helped save my life. It doesn't matter how many times I see that video, I'm just so honored and proud to be a part of a ministry that is doing such great work for the Lord. And um, just I just came last week from a meeting with all of our directors, and it's just so humbling to worship God next to men and women of God that have responded to the call and see the need. There is a great need. There's so many struggling in addiction, alcoholism, um, you know, we have so many testimonies. Um, we have an intern who didn't come, but she was an emergency room nurse, and her life started falling apart, and she found herself addicted to um, pain pills. And it's a common thing in this world that people are searching for something to fill the void and struggling to live in their emotions and um, just the pain and so they turn to substance abuse and it's exciting that we are growing and expanding across the region and I'm very excited what, for what um, God is doing in the Puget Sound region. Um, we have one men's center and we have Graham Women's Campus but our hopes are to add a women's center because we only have one women's center in Washington and so we house 24 women and um, I, I want to say thank you because at Christmas, a lot of you donated uh, goods that we needed. Uh, Pastor Larry asked for a list, and it was very awesome for this church family to just bless us. Um, our ladies love coffee, and, uh, you know, there's so many needs, and so um, thank you for that. Uh, so my name is Stacy, and I've been around for 12 years at Graham, uh, various positions, seven years uh, I've been the director, and um, I came right in when Bob Stone was um, in the middle of a building project to be the director. So he retired, him and his wife Carolyn, after 28 years at Graham, and then um, I stepped into this building project, so we currently house 24 Whereas when they were directing, it was 12 women was pretty much the max. And so we've uh, really grown. Uh, we have a beautiful dorm house. Um, and we are currently uh, looking at expanding our classroom. Um, our classroom is in a garage. And so um, we're looking at expanding that in this next year. Um, but I'm going to invite the women up to the front now and... Uh, have them just stand across the front and so I can introduce you to them. This ministry is all about them. It's all about them. It's all about what God can do in a life that is surrendered. So there's a lot of you. If, you, if some of you want to go ahead and go up on stage, that's fine. We pretty much brought most of our house today. Um, there was a few behind all right, so I'm going to go ahead and have you share your name, how long you've been in the program, and what was it that you were struggling with? Um, I'm Heidi. I've been in the program for about four months, and I was struggling with methamphetamines. Hi, my name is Trinity. I'm in my sixth month of the program, and I was struggling with marijuana and cocaine. Hi, my name is Shelby. I am in my ninth month, and I was struggling with tobacco. I'm Emily. I am in my 12th month, and I've been struggling with methamphetamines. Hi, I'm Janelle. I'm in my fifth month, and I was struggling with alcohol. Hi, I'm Peggy. I've been there three weeks, and I was struggling with alcohol. Hi, I am Joe, and I battled alcoholism. 
Hi, my name is Amber. Um, I've been three days in, and I um, struggle with meth addiction. I'm Alex. I'm in my fifth month, and I struggled with alcohol, opiates, and methamphetamines. Hi, my name is Audrey. I've been here 10 months, and I struggle with crack cocaine. Hi, my name is Paige, and I'm in my 14th month, and I struggle with methamphetamine. Hi, my name is Nicole, and I am in my 14th month, and I've struggled with uh, opiates, alcohol, and methamphetamine. So if I can have the one sit down. If you have been here over 10 months, then I want you to stay up here, and then, the, and then um, just the ones that have already shared. Hi, I'm Elena, and I've been here for a month, and I struggle from bouncing one addiction to another. Hi, my name is Pam, and I'm in my 12th month, and I struggle with alcohol. Hi, my name is Taryn, and I struggle with a meth addiction. I've been here for two weeks. Hi, my name is Drea. Um, I have been here for two weeks, and I am struggling with uh, quitting methamphetamine alcohol and um, uh, I was going to say something else, depression. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Jen and I struggled with uh, marijuana and methamphetamine. Hi, my name is Delena. I've been here for two and a half months and I struggled with methamphetamines and heroin. Hi, my name's Mandy, and I'm in my third month now, and I struggled with marijuana, pain pills, methamphetamines, and benzos. Thank you. Okay, I have a few of you up here. Okay, and then I'll call Trinity and Shelby. Okay, I'm going to have them, some of them share some of their story. So, Emily... Why don't you tell everybody what brought you to Teen Challenge and what God is doing right now in your life? So when I came to Teen Challenge, me and my husband were both in a meth addiction, and he ended up um, getting arrested for domestic violence and leaving me outside in the snow for 24 hours. Um, I had frostbite on both hands. Um, when the hospital released me to Teen Challenge, they told me that I would have to come back in two weeks to have an amputation of at least fingertips, if not full fingers. Uh, four months into the program and my hands are fully functioning, like perfectly functioning hands with no amputation. Um, right now in my, uh, my program, God is actually working with me. Um, I'm going to be really open here. And uh, he's teaching me how to have grace for people that have gone through similar things that I've already gone through. Um, a lot of the time I feel like, you know, I got it, so you should get it. And that's not necessarily always the case. <laughs> and so... Um, I'm struggling a lot with trying to have compassion for the new girls that come in and realize that I was there once, too. So. Thank you, Emily. Um, so can you share, um, so have you always been a Christian? No. I'm going to be open, too. <laughs> um, so I was a Christian when I was a kid, and then when I was eight, uh, my family was baptized Mormon. Um, so from 8 until I came back into the program, so from 8 to 31, I was actually Mormon. Um, and actually last year in June, I got baptized as a Christian at our spiritual emphasis. So, yeah. Awesome. And um, we've actually extended her time a little bit, not because she hasn't done all the things that she's supposed to, but we just want to make sure we're part, we partner with another ministry that has a transitional living and so Emily is excited to go there and get a job. And we just want to make sure that she's solid in her identity in Christ. And there's no confusion of merging the two together. And so um, I'm excited for what God is doing in Emily's life and the restoration and healing in your family that is happening just because of her faithfulness and commitment to the Lord. Thank you. Pam, um, so what what brought you to Teen Challenge, and what is God doing since the last couple months? Big stuff. Um, okay, um, I I'm 
met a man, a gentleman in, from the South when I was 18 years old. I married him. Uh, he was an evangelist, uh, Pentecostal. I was raised Pentecostal. Um, and uh, I had the calling to, to also be a minister's wife. Um, we lived in the Bible Belt in the South, which a lot of, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. But uh, my, my mind was, I want to win souls for Christ. And um, But being a minister's wife after 15 years, uh, a lot of, of stuff you put on a pedestal. And, and I, as a, a young woman, allowed a lot of, of what people's expectations on me were. And um, I turned my back on God, and I, I allowed somebody, just people to steal my joy, basically. And... Um, so I, I ran a lot of years away from the Lord, but in the meantime, we were married 25 years with a son and daughter. Um, we ended up getting divorced, but we stayed really close friends. Uh, we were blessed to raise two, two children who love God, and my son is a minister. My daughter is a worship leader in church, so we're very blessed that way. But um, over the years, 40-some years, we stayed, my ex-husband and I stayed really good friends. Um, as I got older in life, my 50s, I started to drink, and that led to a DUI and, and all, all that good stuff, terrible. But I still had the support of my family for the most part. Um, then um, with the DUI came all the other stuff and a lot of uh, the hard feelings with my ex and with my children, but God still was chasing after me, and uh, I knew that. And the songs we sang this morning just really... He has just been running after me and been there. I knew that. But um, so uh, I asked to rent a room for my ex-husband in his home and him living for the Lord, but he still was kind enough. And I was renting a room for about a year and a half from him. We lived next door to my daughter and grandkids and all. But a year ago, December, I had been sober for 17 months, was in an IOP program. And... Um, he, my ex-husband got sick. They thought it was bronchitis, and I took him to the emergency room, and a week and a half later, he died suddenly of COVID. Yeah, and um, I, it hit me really hard, and I went hard to the bottom. I just got, got crawled in his bed and started drinking heavy, really heavy, lying to my daughter next door. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm just grieving. My son flew out from Maryland where he lives, started doing the process of the funeral and everything, and... Um, and my kids approached me and said, Mama, you're all we have left, and we want you to go to Teen Challenge. <laughs> and I didn't even know what it was, and I said, I can't go live with 20 teenagers. I just can't do it. <laughs> I couldn't. And they said, no, it's adults, too. And I said, I still can't do it. <laughs> I'm an old lady. They call, they call us the Golden Girls. But at 59, I stand here today in my 12th month. And let me tell you, the day I walked into Teen Challenge, I knew God put me there. I knew he did. And he, he kept running after me. And I'll tell you, he has just been with me this whole time. And I thought, I'll never say I'm leaving. I'll never. But let me tell you something. It's hard. <laughs> this, you learn in one year there, in here, where I'm at, Teen Challenge, what takes seven years out on the outside. But I'm telling you, God is with us. And we live in a bubble almost. But he is so good and so loving. And as I've been through this program and my children have been restored in my life completely and everything, and yes, I've grieved my ex-husband, but I know where he's at. So God has took care of that. But I will tell you, in the last two weeks, I did find out that I have stage three kidney disease. But the enemy came to me, and he goes, oh, you've got to get out of here. You've got to go home. You've got to go home. You got to, oh, they can't take care of your issues. They can't get... And the enemy just started feeding me, and I went down that rabbit hole, and I ran into the office. I said, i got to go home. I can't. I'm just weary. I can't take any more. I can't take any more. And I got, the staff was talking to me. I got on the phone with my son at long distance, and he started praying with me. And he started praying with me. And the enemy just, I knew he was lying so hard to me. And I said, this fear is not of God. This is not of God. And the song we sang today about the God, Jesus, he, the fear is, and what Stacy has told me, and I am trusting and believing I'm going to walk through this and I'm going to be healed. I will be healed. And I'm telling you, I, God is just so precious. And he is just, he, he, I will never let somebody steal my joy again. I will not. Thank you so much, Stacy. Hold on, Pam. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, at the beginning of her testimony, she talked about just... Um, following all the rules. And so in a program, it's challenging to 
be in a relationship and not make it about a program or rules. But we work very hard to teach them that it's the grace. It's grace. It's not striving. It's not being perfect. It's not about um, anything about that. It's about just letting go and letting Jesus be your strength and your healer and your provision and your hope you know, and, and every day is a new day, and we wake up every day with faith for that day, and I've seen the transformation, and I've seen, like, a, a lot of times it takes six months for them to surrender, and it that is the most difficult thing for us is that we want them to come in and surrender to the Lord and get with, you know, the discipleship program because it's to their benefit, you know, um, but it's not like that where we're dealing with people and there's there's healing that needs to happen. And I'm just so grateful for Pam and her process. And it and it has been hard, but um, I love this is what we get to do. And so thank you, Pam. Audrey. Love Audrey. <laughs> My story. I tried crack and I liked it. That's my story. I was raised in a good family and I tried something and I liked it and it stuck for over 30 years. And it was, I hit rock, rock, rock bottom before I got help. I have never been in a uh, rehab program before. This is my first and my last. <laughs> <laughs> first and last one. Um, I knew God existed and I believed in him, but I didn't know him. And I'm still learning who he is. And every day is a struggle because some days you see a miracle, some days you don't, and you'd be like, where is he? And But for the most part, I know he's with me, and I never knew that. And that's has helped me a lot, and I learned that a lot at Teen Challenge, that he is with me and that I can call on him whenever I need him. And I rely on him every day. I ask him to give me strength to get through another day. Because some days are harder than others. And well, for the most part, most of the days are good, but hey, everybody have a bad day. So, yeah. Well, living with 24 women is what makes us grow seven years. <laughs> if you can only imagine, and Audrey's done well to be gracious and kind <laughs> to all of you, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, but... Um, one of the things just recently that God's revealed to you is just what strongholds are. Yes. And just talk just a little bit about that. Um, a stronghold is something that you're fighting with your flesh and your soul. And I've been fighting. And God's in me, I would say 90%. I'm holding on to that 10%. I'm trying to let it go. But, you know, what is you want some control in something. And... I feel them every day getting closer and closer because when I got here, I didn't feel them. I didn't feel anything. Uh, I was just wondering, where is he? And then throughout being here, I seen little miracles happen in front of me. And that was a sign. You know, he, I knew he existed, but I never seen him. And being here, I seen a lot of little things that, you know, you overlook when you're out in addiction. You don't know looking for God looking for the next fix and I'm being sober I see it all now and before I didn't see anything you know now you see it all and like I said I'm still struggling a little bit trying to hold on to the last little bit but it's, he's saying no he said no give it up and I'm almost there I'm gonna give him another week <laughs> and hold. I'm gonna give it another week and I'm just gonna hold on to it and see what happens Thank you, Audrey. Paige. So my name is Paige, and um, I came from a really good family. Um, and I just want to say the enemy does not discriminate. You don't have to come from a broken home to find yourself stuck in addiction. Um, I grew up with great parents. They've been married for 30 years. Dad's a doctor. They love the Lord. But I struggled with self-hatred for a very long time and I let the enemy get in my head and tell me that I am not good enough that I am not worthy enough that I do not meet these worldly standards of what women are supposed to be and it consumed my life 
and it brought me into this darkness where I was doing anything and everything I could to meet these worldly standards, and ultimately it spiraled me into a meth addiction for six years um, to the point where I was arrested at the Canadian border for possession of methamphetamines. By the grace of God, he plucked me out, and he brought me here, and I knew God, I knew who he was, but like Audrey, I never had a relationship with him. I never built a relationship with him. I didn't care to. I really rode on the coattails of my parents' um, faith for a long time. And here I learned to build my own relationship with Jesus. And I really expected the world to save me. I expected a man to save me. And and God's showing me that that's not the case, that he's the only one that can save me. It can't be a man. It can't be false comforts. And and he is pleased with me, and I am worthy. And I'm going to be okay. (laughs) Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Why don't you share what what brought you to Teen Challenge? Um, what brought me to Teen Challenge was um, was my choices. I had an opiate addiction for 20 years. Um, it started out with a, a chronic pain condition. So I uh, received pain pills from doctors. Um, I grew up in a Christian home. I grew, um, I brought my kids up in church, and I was the one sitting in church with a pill addiction. I was in bondage to it for 20 years. After that, that wasn't enough. I then started drinking. I was drinking myself to death. I had alcohol hepatitis. Um, I was close to cirrhosis. I didn't care. At this point, I was still working with the pill addiction drinking myself to death. After that COVID hit, that gave me more of an excuse to be a victim, to isolate, and to keep my addiction going. I went through secular programs, but that wasn't enough. The key was missing in the keys, Jesus. I then started experimenting with meth for a year. The meth took my life in six months. It took my mind. I lived in a car, and it was just out of control. I landed in the streets of Bakersfield alone, on my knees, pleading for God. My daughter, who is a pastor and married to one, came and got me and drove me here to Grand Washington from California. So when I walked in those doors, I was broken, I was scared, and I didn't know what to expect. In a new state, in a new place that I didn't understand how the program was worked or ran. But God brings us places for a reason. And right now, I'm at a point where I am um, being ministered to by the Lord daily in work that I'm doing. And right now, I'm learning faith. I'm learning faith, and he's building my trust. Right now, I'm waiting to hear his call for where he wants me next. But God is good, and without faith, there is no recovery. That was the key that I was missing. Thank you, Nikki. Jen? Yes. Hi, my name is Jen, and what got me here is a lifetime of um, bad choices. Um, so I grew up in a broken home. Both of my parents were 14 years old, and um, needless to say, I had a, I had a rough life. Um, my stepdad ended up um, giving me meth when I was like seven or eight. I um, ended up having a baby by him when I was 11. And so just um, having to deal with that shame, like my whole life, just shame after shame, like people shaming me because I had a baby, um, led me to, a, to more addiction. And um, so I pretty much ended up homeless and on the streets. And um, I feel like God closed every single door for me to be at Teen Challenge. And um, I encountered his love and, and he just started breaking things off of me. And um, yeah, um, and I'm just, I'm so grateful to have encountered him. Um, and so now I'm in the season of just learning to take my thoughts and my actions captive.
because it's not only about him breaking things off, but it's about me doing my part and taking my thoughts and choosing to be joyful. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Trinity, how old are you? I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> She's so mature for 18, right? Yes. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Trinity. I'm from Eugene, Oregon. Uh, may seem like a little bit of a a little bit a ways away it is. I'm very uncomfortable being in a different state, but you know what? The Lord likes to bring us out of comfortableness so that he can work on us because that has to happen. And so, um, like a lot of girls here, I grew up in a Christian home, and my both my parents were Christian. Um, my grandparents got custody of me when I was eight years old, and so by that point, we were in church every Sunday. I grew up in my youth group. I grew up in missionettes. I had all the knowledge. I was on the worship team, and I did everything right. I graduated high school. My parents didn't graduate high school. So I completed all the steps and all the steps, but um, all of my younger kid traumas that I had never dealt with, I just pushed them down. I pushed them down so far that when I got sexually assaulted in um, my junior year, I kind of just shut down because it was COVID and I had nowhere to go. I was running away from myself and I ended up finding myself like on the floor in, in an alcohol and cocaine addiction, just like blacked out every Friday night and just could not stop. And so um, Teen Challenge came to my church when I was like 11. And um, I remember hearing all their testimonies and I remember um, relating to a lot of them. And it was, it's very sad, all the trauma that I've been through. But um, Teen Challenge really uh, opened up a lot of doors in my heart. And it made me realize that I had a lot of strongholds that I needed to let go of. And uh, while being here, I'm learning how to, like, face all my trauma with, like, the grace of the Lord. And just know that um, I am his masterpiece and that he loves me. Um, my sophomore and junior year and senior year a little bit, I struggled with homosexuality. And that happened because I suffered a lot of sexual abuse. And so he's also just bringing me through that slowly. We're still working on it. But um, he's bringing me through that from day to day. And he tells me every day that he loves me. And I, I read Ephesians 2.10 to myself every day. I, for I am the Lord's masterpiece. He has created me with a purpose. So um, I'm just so grateful to be here. And at a very young age, too. I'm glad I'm getting this under my belt for right now. Yeah. So good. Thank you, Trinity. <laughs> Shelby, why don't you just share a little bit about what brought you? Um, my, I grew up in an alcoholic home, um, and a lot of abuse happened, and I didn't ever really talk about it. I never said anything about it. I just started smoking cigarettes behind the house, and then I just became a smoker when I was old enough to become a smoker. Um, and most recent was more abuse. And then I, I had experienced my biological father, his best friend, and he um, actually was on America's Most Wanted when I was a child. Um, he was manufacturing methamphetamines, and I was a witness to that. And his best friend had put drugs in a beer that wasn't even my beer. I was just nervous, and I picked up the beer and drank the beer, and then he raped me, and I didn't say anything about it for, I mean, not until I got here, and so I know that it's by the grace of God and by, by his love and by what Stacy does here for all these women, I probably would have never said anything, and I didn't know how much it impacted me and how much it changed me. Um, and the shame and the guilt, the guilt I felt from their, all of the drugs that were around me that I couldn't control, and, and by them wanting to hush me or to keep me quiet, um, was really, really, really out of my hands, and I needed God, and I remember falling to my knees in front of my great-grandmother's laundry room, and I mean, my hands were on the floor, I was sobbing, and sobbing because I just wanted it all to end. Um, and my hands lifted up from my elbows and they were not my hands, like these were my hands. And they were, like I was holding my head 
And I was just holding my head, and finally I stopped crying, and I came to my senses and was like, this, that's God. God, that's God, you know? <laughs> and, um, and I was okay for a little while, but I eventually had said something along the lines of Teen Challenge, and I got here, and it changed my life completely, <laughs> completely. I've never, ever known what it was like to have so much support and love, unconditional love, um, and all in the right places and all on his timing, and it's absolutely incredible. Thank you, Shelby. <laughs> so if we can show the sponsorship video, and then I'll come back up. My name is Stephanie, and I'm from Brownsville. Hi, my name is Adam. My name is Jason. My name is Joseph. Faustino. Amanda. I was addicted to heroin and meth. Drug of choice was opiates in general. Bulimia. And then I masked that with severe alcohol. Meth and heroin. Addiction was like walking through hell. The darkest time in my life. It's very hard, and it's lonely. Chaos everywhere depression all the time, and anger 24-7. My whole family had abandoned me because of all of the pain and suffering I'd caused. And I really had no drive or no hope or just no purpose of living. I viewed myself as um, a junkie. I saw myself as worthless. I saw myself as um, I deserved to live under that bridge. The Adult and Teen Challenge program for me was, was a place of peace a place where I could finally find out who I was, who I was intended to be, and who, honestly, God created me to be. The program was easy for me to be in, but it required change, and that was the hard part for me. It was difficult, but it was worth it. No pun intended, it's challenging. It's definitely a beautiful uh, process, but it's in no terms easy. The hardest year ever, but the best. I found who I was without, without drugs, without alcohol, without an eating disorder. I learned that I'm chosen that I'm accepted, that I'm loved. God is a God of forgiveness, of mercy, of grace. I found freedom from the chains that I'd worn my entire life. And I learned that my past does not define me. My identity now and forever is I'm a child of God. I look to his word and the truth and not to the lies of the enemy. Honestly, it's all because of Jesus. Before, I was a dirtbag. The trust that people have for me now. Um, nobody trusted me before I came to this program. And now I'm responsible for a, a campus, um, men's lives. God has entrusted me with a lot. And um, 12 years ago, that would not have been the case. Sponsorship was an anchor in this wild program. The sponsorship program is, is designed to help people get through the program that can't financially afford it. It helps students know that there's someone out there who cares about them and is praying for them. It was humbling, but it was also, I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why somebody who didn't know me would want to pray for me. It was amazing because I had burnt a lot of bridges in my past and the, I didn't think anybody cared enough to pray for me or want me to do better and having a sponsor, I saw that there are people that cared. I've seen guys who were on the brink of the edge, about to leave, and they received a letter from their sponsors, which gave them hope to stay another day. To any of those sponsors out there that are listening that may have sponsored me, I wanna say thank you. I would like to say thank you to all of my sponsors. They, they all made a difference. There was days when, when I wanted to give up and I wanted to quit, and I know it sounds cliche, but they sent that letter and they listened to God's voice and told me exactly what I needed to hear in that moment that kept me, kept me going, kept me focused on the bigger picture and staying. They help uh, give that hope to somebody that doesn't have hope. You make it possible for people like me. Thank you to all of our current sponsors. You guys keep this program up and operational, so we can't thank you enough. If you're considering on sponsoring a student, it can help change a life. Help save a life help change a life, put hope within reach.
Am I on now? Yeah. So sponsoring a student is $45 a month, and it just helps us in the ministry to provide what they need for them, and it gives them an opportunity. Um, a lot of them don't have family or healthy support, so it's another way of, um, like we just went through Christmas, and so many of them had amazing sponsors that just bought a gift for them and blew their mind, and it was really awesome to see the love come through that. And so if you are interested in sponsoring, um, at the back, we'll, I'll be over there, and you can. we have this card you can fill out. Um, I wanted to share, uh, it's exciting because I'm here, and we haven't been here for a while, um, but we've gone through a lot of changes, but we do have a lot of events, and you're local, which is exciting for me, um, because the first thing is, um, you know, well, I'll, I'll step back a little bit. My testimony is that I went through Teen Challenge 33 years ago. I went through addiction in California and found myself in the program. So this program has really transformed my life in huge ways. And it's very humbling to be able to come back and say, hey, you know, it works for me. And I personally believe the call in my life is to raise up leaders, to raise up women of God um, that can go out and start ministries and and be examples in their community and serve their church and their pastor. And so I'm excited for that call. But one of the things that I've been learning this last year as a leader um, is that um, the yoke on me is his yoke is easy. <laughs> and I'm, I haven't been in ministry my whole life. And so I've carried a heavy yoke for a while and, and just felt the stress and the burden of the ministry. And um, I feel so much freedom this last year because I know that God is the provider. And so I get to have this opportunity to come and share with someone who maybe feels a tug on their heart and wants to help. And so I want to just take a few minutes and tell you about like some of our events that we have. Um, in March, we have an online auction. And this helps, um, you know, all of these things help on our funding but the online auction, you know, we need people, first of all, to watch it because I have some great items. I have a Les Schwab $800 gift certificate for tires. Um, I have a vacation cabin in Winthrop for five days. Um, so I have some things on there, so I need people to watch it um, and make bids. And then I also have golf, or do we have golfers in this house? Okay, we have a few. Exciting. So we have a golf event in August. Um, that I would love for you to attend and maybe invite some friends that golf. Um, I'm always looking for a men's committee to help with the golf. Um, that's a big thing because I'm not a golfer and I'm running a golf tournament, so that's challenging. Um, uh, we have in September, I have a gala, and this year I'm, my goal is 270 people. And I'm having it at Farm 12, so if you haven't had an opportunity to go to Farm 12, you should go. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I'm so excited. And I will just share with you, um, you know, um, my leadership gave me some pushback and said, oh, this is way bigger than you've done. And I said, yeah, but COVID kind of like stopped things. And so they said, well, you're going to have to show us, you know, that this is going to work for you. And so I said, okay, fine. And like a week later, I had given them $25,000 to pay for the event, which was huge. And that's God. That's, again, the burden is not mine. It's the Lord. So I took it back to the Lord. And so now I would love to have 270 seats filled. So I get to invite you because you're local. It would be awesome to have you there. And it's going to be a beautiful event. Um, and also, I am starting this year by adding volunteers to our, our ladies as you heard their stories. Um, there's four of us at the center. And probably about 20 appointments a week. So we need help with getting our ladies to appointments. And, um, and so there's lots of opportunity for volunteers. Maintenance. I don't know anything about a generator, a septic pump, cutting trees, but I've learned a lot in the 12 years. So I have come a long way. I can actually put gas and start a generator now. I can sometimes troubleshoot a lawnmower. Um, but it would be nice, you know, if somebody has it on their heart that is gifted in those things that um, our last guy that came um, was a young 80-year-old. And so um, 
I, I was terrified if he would try to go up the ladder and clean the gutters. And so I just had to say, listen, I love you, so I got to let you go because I'm worried. I don't want your wife to get mad at me because you fell off a ladder. And so, um, but um, we just need help in that area. And then in November, December, we have a Christmas tree lot that is over in the Parkland area. And for 30 plus days, our ladies are out in the cold selling Christmas trees. And we have about 400 trees that we would love to sell. And so I'm excited to, you know, just put that out ahead of time. And so, um, again, I want to just say thank you so much for having us here, for the opportunity for our ladies to share their stories and to give hope. Our mission in this region is to bring hope to every addict, which is why we have the comprehens comprehensive approach. And um, God is doing really great things through a lot of the things that we've added over the last couple years. And, and um, it's a miracle. Every one of these ladies is a miracle and a beautiful testimony of the power of God transforming lives. I'm excited that we are your ministry that you are supporting. So thank you. Thank you very much. And anytime you would like a tour, you're close. So you can come over and visit the campus. Thank you.